Another episode of Groovy Tuesday. My name's Paul Church from Clarity Stamp in the, here in the UK. Ooh, that was a bit tongue-tied, was it? Should we start that again? Just wait for everyone to, to pull up a chair, get comfy. I can see we've got some viewers. I shall just wait for the chat to start appearing down the side. And then I know that we're good to go. Stuart is in the room with you today. So if you have any questions, then fire away. I wonder who's going to be first to, to post a good morning um, in the group. There we go, it's Mo. Mo's always one of the first. Good morning, Mo. How are we today? Looking forward to another episode of Groovy Tuesday? I know I am. I look forward to it every week. Here we all come. We've got Sue, we've got Jill, we've got Sharon, lovely Glynis, Karin. There we go. And I think I've just had my all clear from Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. The sound is good. Super duper. So at least you can hear all my waffling. There we go. Everybody's coming in. Jane's in the room. Um, yes, lovely to have everybody's company again today. And um, Mr. Ken's there. Here we all come. Pull up a chair. Plenty of room. Um, front seats all the way around. That's one of the great things, isn't it, about Facebook and YouTube lives. Um, it doesn't matter where in the world you are, where in the country, if you're in, in your garden, if you're in the living room, in the kitchen, maybe you're out having a coffee somewhere, or even on the bus or the train. As long as you've got an internet connection, then you can tune in. So um, do we have any first timers in the room today? I know we've had quite a few the past couple of weeks, which is brilliant. And I hope you keep coming back. Um, yeah, so it's okay. So here we go with our, our, our Tuesday weather reports. Let's have a look. So we've got Patricia, very miserable weather. Whereabouts see you this morning, Patricia? It's sort of grey and overcast and drizzly down here in Kent. Well, it is in Edenbridge anyway. Um, Brenda, good morning, first timer, welcome. You're among very good friends, I can assure you of that. So if you have any questions, then um, fire away. We've got some of the lovely design team in the room, Stuart's in the room, and if I catch them, then um, I'll answer them as much as I can. So here we go, here comes all the, the weather reports, miserable and gray and crawly, overcast in Lincish, Lincolnshire, Bright in Berkshire Downs, overcast in West Hickam, Hickam, West Hickam, <laughs> West Wickham. Oh dear, it's going to be one of those days today, isn't it? So um, <laughs> uh, we'll have some fun. We'll have some giggles, um, and we'll get some groovy going as well. So um, I hope everyone's been behaving this past week. Um, who was in the shack yesterday on the number 300 bus? Ding, ding. The bus has left the depot again. Um, it was, oh, Josie's had an accident last week and have a poorly foot, plus lots of bruises. Oh, Josie, I hope you get better soon. Oh, not good, is it? We will send you lots of love from the Groovy Groovy Tuesday gang. So um, that'll make that'll put, bring some sunshine into your living room or wherever you're watching from. Um, yes, the, the number bus, number bus, the number three hundred bus yesterday with Bob. It was brilliant. Um, yeah, so many people in the room. It was fantastic, um, and that heart wasn't that clever. It, how it went from a David Attenborough um, documentary to a decoration hanging in the corner of the living room to a beautiful doodle um, in the Shack Shack on bus 300. So if you did um, miss out yesterday for whatever reason, don't forget you can go back and watch it again and um, see what happened and what went on. You can either watch it via our YouTube page, or if you go to Barbara's blog that she posted yesterday, which is barbaragrayblog.com, then there's a link in there as well. But I'm sure many of you in the room today 
were in the room yesterday. So, yeah, the bus driver was back in business. Um, hello from Michigan. Hello, Andrea. Welcome. What time is it in Michigan? Uh, it's lovely to see technology. It's still sort of, in a way, it blows me away that I can be having a conversation like this um, from people all over the world. Um, it's about, Andrew's just about to say what time it is in Michigan. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, sort of back in the day, wasn't it? Sort of, I remember if you had to call international, it's a few minutes past 6 a.m. No, oh, it's not too bad then, is it? Are you up early for going to work or are you just a, an early riser? So, an unexpected visit to any, getting fed up of seeing that hospital after Stephen was taken in the week for like a pair of, maybe you need to get a season ticket, Josie. <laughs> Free parking. No, shouldn't say things like that. Sue White. Do I have a list of all the plates I've used in Groovy Tuesday? Um, I don't actually, but I'm sure we could um, put something together. Um, maybe Stuart, Stuart, could you make a note of that? And um, maybe for, for next week, we can have a look at what plates we've covered in Groovy Tuesday since we started. I think that's a very good idea. Um, maybe we could put something on the website. Um, so yeah, good question. Um, we'll see what we can sort out for you soon. So, so Andrea's just here for Groovy. Um, Susan Featherstone, first time Newcastle. Excellent. So, Paul, please can you give me a notification when you come stream on Facebook? I get them from Barbara. Thank you. Oh, Jean, I don't know why you don't get it um, for Groovy Tuesday because it's exactly the same process when we create the events. Um, and you're watching via Facebook, aren't you? Yeah, um, I'm not sure why that wouldn't be the case. Sometimes it, it can be Facebook just having glitches. Um, I tend to post the event early in the morning on the Tuesday. Um, so maybe if you pop to sort of Clarity Facebook page when you get up, um, it should say that it's coming up and it can you can click a link and it will remind you when we go live. So I'm just about to sneeze, I think. <gasps> Excuse me. Oh, sorry about that. A hand cream on. And I think the, the scent of the hand cream. So, um, yeah, weird, isn't it? I mean, we talk about technology and how it can be one minute it's okay and another minute it can be not. Um, Thank you, bless you. Uh, <laughs> I think I've got another one coming. Let's have another slurp of coffee. So yeah, so it's been a busy old week at Clarity Towers. We had the fantastic shack floral panels last week um, in both Stamp and Groovy on Create and Craft on Wednesday and Thursday. It was that popular um, that we were unable to do the two o'clock show on Thursday because we just couldn't keep up with the, the demand. And um, and then obviously we was back in the shack with Barb yesterday, groovy Tuesday today. Then we've got in the shack with Clarity on Create and Craft, no, not tomorrow, Thursday at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. Then on Friday, it's Crafting with Clarity. So we've got 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. and a cheeky little extra hour at 11 on Craft Extra. And then the lovely Tina Cox will then be entertaining you on Saturday. Get groovy with Tina. And she's going to be looking at Linda's Flowers and Lace set three at 1 o'clock and 5 o'clock. So we've got lots to keep you busy over the next few days. And then obviously we're back in the shack on Monday as well. So it's all go here. So it seems as if, yeah, we've sort of kick-started. I mean, I can't believe it's March already. And um, 
well, it's the middle of March, it's, well, nearly the end of March, it's the 21st, where am I talking about? This year has just flown by, it really, really has, and um, yeah, Easter's just around the corner, who's bought any Easter eggs yet? Anyone bought any Easter eggs? I have, I've bought loads, but I've eaten loads as well. <laughs> Easter eggs are not just for Easter, that's my excuse anyway. So, Welcome to everybody that's been with us for a while and welcome to all our newcomers tuning in for the first time. We're carrying on using one of the lovely Josie Davidson's um, duet plates. Let's turn it over so we can have a look at it in a little bit more detail. And this allows us to create a beautiful frame or border around our work. And this is the piece that we created over the past 11 weeks. And we broke it down into various different stages. And when we look at the plate here, so what we did was we took the top half, which is the embossed part, and then the bottom half, which is perforated, and combining them both together, this is the end result. And last week I'd finished off all my Pico cutting and we had a look at threading the ribbon through the frame, if you wanted to do that. And we also looked at with it a piece of paper, didn't we? Which I've mislaid. So you can use lovely satin ribber or you can use paper um, to thread in between if you choose to. And there's four different designs in the diagonal collection from JC. We have the Sending Love Your Way, which is the one that we've been working on. We then also have the Thinking of You, and we give them a, a title so that, that we can identify them a little bit more easily. And what you'll notice is that the borders at the top and the bottom are different to the ones down the side, and that's because it's based on a diagonal grid. The third one in the collection is the Season's Greeting, one of my favourites, because I love this sort of pointy um, edge to it. And then the fourth one in the collection is the Hope You Feel Better Soon. So you have so many different choices and the different designs um, when it comes to being able to create these beautiful frames. And for those that have been following over the past few weeks, I know that some of you are a little bit apprehensive about, oh no, there's no way I can do that. But if you've got the right tools, which is what we bring you with the duet plates, it is achievable. And it doesn't matter what level or what part of that groovy bus journey you're on, you can stop and start at any point. So maybe you just want to do the embossed design, you can stop at that. Maybe you want to combine both and leave it at that. What we did was we introduced these solid lines so that if you're not into your pico cutting, it gives you that guide for trimming it down to create a beautiful frame. Okay, let's get rid of that random little piece on that. Okay, so that's what we created and we just finished that off last week. Haven't decided what I'm going to pop in the middle just yet, but I'm sure we'll have some beautiful designs coming up over the next few weeks. Um, but then saying that, I think the floral panels from last week would look lovely in the center of those as well. Okay, and then what I thought was, we'd, we'd sort of have a play with the frame and we'd turn it into a bookmark. Okay, so you can have your card that you can give to someone as a gift or maybe you want to pop a picture in the center so it becomes a picture frame. Really, really, for me, this lovely lace work, I never thought that I'd be able to achieve something as beautiful as this, so elegant, with ease. And once you sort of pick up a few hints and tips from the experts like Josie and um, Kalinis and Jane, then I'm just in the fortunate position to be able to transfer that information to everybody tuning in. Okay. 
So what we had a look at last week was we took a, a strip of parchment that will go into our bookmark sleeves, which we have available on the website. And we're showing how when we look at the border here, it's shorter. And we had a play and we looked at extending it to create our bookmark. If you go back to episode one, when we created the frame, it was all about creating the registration marks so that we didn't spend a lot of time doing all the embossing. And then when we came to join it up, it was a little bit skew if. Okay. So when we're working with the groovy plate, the top half, as I say, is sort of a traditional groovy plate, which has been laser etched. And it will say on here, emboss this side up. So what we did was I took my piece of parchment and I lined it up with the edge of the plate and the open end was lined up against this, uh, these two lines here, the outer line, okay? And what I did was I started it off with the design here and then we went along and then I did this bit here because you'll notice that the pattern changes, okay? So if I, let's have a look, take my tool. Let's zoom in a little bit now. I'm going to do my stretching exercises. Remember what side to zoom in. I still have to rely on my little note in front of me to tell me which way to come in and which way to go out. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in really close and then I'll move the plate. Okay. Good morning, Trish. Welcome. Another newbie. Lovely to have your company. So what you'll notice, you've got this block of design here and you've also got this one. So what we did, but when we get to here, all of a sudden the pattern changes. Okay, so we've gone from the shape there to it disappearing here. So what we did was we started off and then we stopped at that point. And do you remember I put some low tack tape over the edge so that I didn't get carried away. Then what we did, we smoothed our parchment all the way along until it realigned in this area here. And then we repeated the process, so we came to a stop here. So what we're gonna do now is go back in and fill the rest of the area to complete our bookmark. So for this part of the, the project, so far today, we're gonna need our plate. Now, if you have any of the other plates in the collection, then you can do exactly the same. You just need to have a look at the design and decide where you want to start. And I did practice, don't get me wrong, I, I had a play, look, and I went wrong to start with. And then I worked out what I needed to do. Okay, so this means, I mean, I'm going to turn mine into a bookmark because I think it would be a lovely gift, but this could be down the edge of a card. Um, you could use it as sort of um, like a cigar wrap around something. But it just shows how you can extend. You're only restricted by the length of your parchment. Okay, so we're going to need a groovy plate, a piece of parchment we started on, and then we're going to use the groovy number one and number two tool, but we're actually going to concentrate on the number two, which has a little ball on the end. Okay. So did anybody complete their bookmark last week? Did anybody do a bookmark last week? Or did you just think, no, nah, I've done the frame, that's enough. Go on, hands up. Please tell me somebody did a bookmark or made a start of the bookmark. I'm sure you did. Anybody? Or are you just chilling out? God, I'm sure somebody must have done one. I'm sure maybe Jane. There we go. Bernie made a start. Excellent. That's brilliant. That's really good. Jill's doing it. 
spot on. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to need that and then we can continue with our design. So, and breathe, it's nice and slow. And if you want to see how we started off on this journey, then um, Stuart could pop a link up to our YouTube page and you can go back and you can watch the first episode of Easy Grid Work. But maybe, maybe you've just invested in the Groovy Starter Kit. You can go back and look at all the previous episodes because there was, um, it was definitely last year. I know it's not this year. Last year, we started off with the Starter Kit on one of the sessions and we worked through it and we created some beautiful pieces of artwork with the butterfly reef and the plates that come within the starter kit. We looked at some spelling backwards using the boxes on the plate mate. There we go, Stuart um, has just popped the link up to our YouTube page, thank you Stuart. So, Lorraine wanted to wait for me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you may just start. Karen's just watching. Um, Sandra didn't do one last week, but she'll definitely do one. Excellent. Myra's embossed one. A coincidence as I started it a few weeks ago. There we go. Great minds think alike, don't they? Okay. Are we ready then? So what we're going to do first is we're going to realign. And what you'll find is that the parchment will just slot back in, okay? So you, you'll find it, it gets held back in place. I'm gonna use a, a couple of groovy tabs to hold my work in place. There we go. So I'm gonna put one on there, like so. And I'm gonna put one, I can go on the edge there. And I'm gonna do my same trick as well, because what I don't wanna do this pattern here isn't the follow-on. So I need to make sure um, that I stop. I don't get carried away. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to adapt it and do something different. So if I take, you can use a piece of copy paper. I'll tell you what, look, I've got a piece of blue paper. So if I, I pop that there, but I'm likely to move it out the way of my hand. Whereas if I put a piece of low tack tape, then that will stop me going any further, hopefully. Okay. Groovy guard, really good for leading on. As I say, I've got hand cream on. Stay down. So we're going to have a look at the, the number two tool, which has a little ball on the end. And all we're going to do now is we're just going to press into the engraved dots okay and once you get into a rhythm it's very relaxed and very chilled i just need to grab my glasses the eyesight isn't what it used to be i haven't even unpacked from tv yet but i know roughly where they are so just bear with me for a moment there we go out they come Glasses definitely make a difference. Jane hasn't done one because she's been busy with other projects. Really, Jane? I wonder what they can be. Okay, so now that's a lot better. Now, one of the a good idea is that if you're, maybe you've been doing this for a while now, a light panel, a light panel can really make a difference to illuminate from underneath. I mean, I've got the, the benefit of the studio lights in here. And, um, but if I was at home and it's of an evening, then the table lamp doesn't really give off much light. So the light panel illuminates from underneath and makes it easier. And what you'll find is that as you start to emboss the pattern, your eye will be drawn to different areas of the design. We've often said in the past that when you get a, 
a new groove you play for the first time, just take a piece of parchment and just trace it out exactly how it comes. Because as you trace it out, you'll see different things. Um, I've often sort of looked at plates and um, when you, the design team sends in their artwork, and I think, well, where does that come from? Because I'm looking at the, the plate as an overall design, but you don't necessarily see some of the elements. Okay, so let's just do this little block here. Now, if you find that when you're sort of pressing in, that you're, you ha you're really gripping um, the light, the, the light tool, the groovy tool, then try maybe holding it upright like so and giving it a little wiggle. You'll still get, I mean, technically, you'll get a better dot by holding the tool upright and wiggling because the whole part of the, the surface of the ball will fit within the groove. Okay, but... For the overall look of our piece of artwork, unless you've got a magnifying glass or um, binocular eyes, nobody's really going to see whether they're completely round, are they? Okay. So all of a sudden it starts to take shape so it doesn't take long to <coughs> excuse me sorry i also just like the effect of the emboss pattern design that i could stop at that point if i want to or see i mean i love this you could be really careful and just have a double edge of the design like so along the edge of your card obviously that's a little random dot there. But you know what I mean? You can see different elements of the design as you work through. Okay. So we're just going to keep pressing into those dots. So I saw somebody a moment ago said that They've only been doing it for a few weeks and they've managed to get pico cutting. Excellent, that's really good. Really, really good. It is one of those things, isn't it? You either get it or you don't get it. Some will get it quicker, some will get it slower. Um, for me, I've always said it took me about six months to perfect it. I mean, I wasn't doing it constantly for six months so I was doing other stuff in between um, but maybe if I'd had the time I would have picked it up quicker but some people will just get it instantly they'll just do it start snipping and that's it they'll get there um, but we've always said there's no rules when it comes to I mean there's different sort of methods and techniques and processes but i'm not going to say it's wrong if you don't hold your tool upright to get a, a perfect dot i'm not going to say you're holding the scissors in the wrong way if it works for you then that's great at the end of the day whether you're doing groovy as a distraction whether you're doing it to make a card for somebody, then at the end of the day, it's all about enjoying the process. And hopefully the various different techniques that we're covering on our Groovy Tuesday journey um, will help enhance that enjoyment. Well, I hope it does anyway. Okay, so we're coming to the end of this part of the pattern. So I've got my tape in place because really talking, reading messages and doing the embossing, I would definitely have gone past that line. Okay, so now let's have a look at what we've done so far. 
Groovy tabs are a must have, they really are. So let's have a look. So we've now got half of our design completed. Now, if you wanted to, you could stop. See, for me, that reminds me of the end of a, a Christmas cracker. I know, Christmas in March. What is it going on about? But it does, it just reminds me of the edge of a cracker. Um, so if I wanted to, I could leave that pattern there and I could put a sentiment or I could put somebody's name. Couldn't I? Like that, that's a bit like a totem pole. Put little faces on there. So what we're gonna do now, that's yeah, I get carried away when I'm doing this, especially when I'm talking to you all at home. So what we're gonna do now is just keep moving it along until we're back in the same position. I've got my guide of the edge of the plate to make sure I'm lined up. This thing from Jill, Easter crackers in Waitrose. Mm, didn't think about crackers for Easter. I suppose we automatically just associate crackers with um, Christmas, don't we? Yeah. I do love a, a nice Easter egg. And at the moment, some of the Easter eggs are cheaper than a bar of chocolate. <laughs> that's my excuse anyway. So that's why I keep buying the, the little one pound Easter eggs because they're cheaper than a bar of chocolate. <laughs> okay, so I've put my piece of low tack tape towards the end again, okay, to stop me getting carried away. I'm gonna use the groovy guard again. See, the groovy guard is great because it has these apertures within them. So it means also it will hold the parchment in place whilst I'm working. Oh, Ken, 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 Ken. <laughs> we can always count on Ken. See, there we go. We thought you was out of a job, didn't we, Ken, once Christmas was over with those Christmas cracker jokes. But here we go. Do the Easter crackers have a funny yolk inside? Well done, Ken. You've just brightened my day. You really... <laughs> Something as simple as that. <laughs> so you're not out of a job just yet, Ken. So what's the next big, um, maybe we need coronation crackers for, for the king's coronation. That would be good, wouldn't it? I'm sure Ken will come up with some jokes for the king's coronation as well. Maybe we could start a new trend. Coronation crackers. It's got a nice ring to it, hasn't it? <sighs> Oh dear. Okay, let's carry on. <laughs> Thank you, Ken, for making me chuckle. See, who'd have thought being in a room on my own that I could sit here and start giggling away? I mean, I could do that anyway without going on Facebook Live and just rock backwards and forwards um, and then wait for the men in white coats to turn up. Imagine if um, people in the office didn't know what I was up to and they walk past a room with a closed door and they can just hear me talking or giggling to myself. Um, I definitely think they'd be sending for the men in white coats, don't you? <laughs> Ken said he's not going to dare, he could end up in the tower. Oh dear. So funny. So, okay. Yes, yeah, so Easter eggs and Easter crackers. I would never have thought that. Well, maybe if you want to make some lovely little um, Easter crackers, um, we have a mini cracker die available don't we um i'm sure stuart could pop a link up to that um 
lovely little bite size um, cracker. So you could use it, you could die cut in parchment, paper, card, and you could put some of those tiny little eggs on the inside as a gift. That's a really good idea. Isn't it funny how you sort of, you think of a product or an item and you just automatically relate it to a certain time of, of the year? I would never have considered, I mean like Easter, Easter bunnies, Easter eggs. I mean obviously there's a more deeper meaning to Easter, but Yeah, Easter crackers. There we go. Thanks, Stuart. So, so yeah, so maybe you want to have a go at making some little Easter crackers. I know people often sort of have like a, a twiggy branch and um, they hang decorated eggs off of them, don't they? Um you could hang the little crackers off of them. Yeah. Jill says there are little ones as well as full size ones. There must be a bunny joke there, Ken. <laughs> oh dear. I think we're all crackers anyway. Well, I speak for myself. Morning, Maggie. Glad you could join us. I hope the car passed its MOT. I know. Easter crackers. Mm. Really showing my age now. They probably don't do it now because it's probably not allowed. At school, decorating eggs. Um we had to sort of make a small hole in the egg and then you had to blow out all the middle, didn't you? And then very carefully decorate the egg. Who did that at school? I'm sure there's a few people in the room that would have done that at school with their eggs. I suppose nowadays the cost of living <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Go on, please tell me I wasn't, I'm sure. They used to do it on Blue Peter, so I know I'm not the only one that used to do that. There it did. Trish used to, see? Not just me, not me just making it up. Okay. So now we have the start of our bookmark. And you may think, oh, it's a little bit off center. Um, it may be at this stage, but we. the reason I went for slightly narrower than the width of the bookmark, and the reason it's more on this side than it is on this side, a couple of different reasons, okay. The main reason was so that when I was creating my alignment, it was easy for me to explain to line up the edge there and line up the edge there. So for people following at home, um, rather than me say, right, okay, you've got a, it's a five mil here and a bit here. It was easier to, as a guide just to do that. Okay, and we can trim it down slightly, or if we wanted to, we can always add another layer of the design. You just need to have a look whereabouts you want to add it. Okay, but we're not gonna go down that road. We're gonna keep it nice and simple, okay? So now that we've done the embossing, see I love, just as I said earlier, just the embossed line art or the dots. And if you wanted to, you could color in each of those little areas or you can perforate, which is what we're about to do now. Okay. 
so to do that, what we're going to need for the next stage is I've got my 12 by 12 black super foam. We also have this available in A4 and A5. But if you're using an A4 square plate, then A4 or 12 by 12 definitely is better. Okay. We're now going to turn it over so that we can read perforate, perforate, perforate this side up. And it's upside down because I'm working on the top part of the design. So what we're going to do now is we need to, first of all, I'm going to start just about this end. Just got to get my eye in first. Yeah, I'm going to start this end, I reckon. Now, what you need to do is that all of these perforations fill in the area, all these open areas in between all the embossed dots, okay? So we just need to find our starting position. And I reckon that starting position is just about there. I've turned my parchment over, so I'm working on the front. Okay, I'm just going to bring my head in over the top slightly so I can see. I'm going to have a groovy tab to hand. So once I'm in place, I can apply the pressure to stick it down. Yeah, I think I'm about there. I reckon so. Yeah. Just about there. Maybe a little smidgen. This is the key part. You've got to get it right. Otherwise, by the time you get down to the end of here, it's going to be a little bit skew if. Technical term that is skew if. So. Just double check in. Yeah. Okay. Just really double checking on that. And what I'm going to do now is I need to see where the pattern stops. And the pattern will stop here. So what you're going to do, if you start off, this was the same end the same end where it has a little space at the end. I've now jumped it to this side of the plate. And what you need to do is go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're gonna to need to stop at the eighth hexagon, octagon, hex. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, hex, hexagon, okay. I'm going to get a, another bit of tape because I know why that's doing that. It's because of the tumble dry sheet. Okay. And now we're going to start to perforate. So I'm using my one needle bolt and we're just going to perforate in between. Okay. Now, as I'm doing this, the parchment is actually what we call blousing, where it pulls away. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to a smaller aperture and it stops that from happening. And all we're going to do is now follow the holes. If you're coming to this stage and you're doing this at home using the light panel, then you would need the white super foam underneath, okay? How far do I go in? I'm probably going through half the, the length of the needle. And you don't have to go as fast as I'm going but I've just got into that rhythm. So let's go 
to the outer part now. But you can see it doesn't take long to go through. If this was being done in a traditional method, this plate underneath would have thousands of holes in. And you'd have to be careful that you didn't get carried away and perforate one of the white embossed dots. Okay. Because Josie has done all the work for us. There's no counting. There's no thinking about where do I perforate? Because you can only perforate where there is a hole. Okay. So let's carry on. Let's just do a little section just to get started so you can see where we're heading. Okay, just like so. So I'm gonna go around the outside there. Need to stop and then come back in. Now there's no um, perforations along this edge. Okay. See, and when you combine both the embossed pattern and the perforating, it gives it a completely different look. And as I said earlier, there's no rules to say that you then have to pico cut. Okay, so we've got a question, <coughs> excuse me, a question from Susan. Why do you go shallow then deep in some patterns? Okay, that's a really good question. So some designs that you're working with, for example, um, a multi-needle tool. When you've got a load of needles, it can take quite a lot of pressure to go all the way through. So some of the, the tools have got sort of six, seven, eight, nine, ten needles in one tool. So when you try and push through, because traditionally you would be doing that on a printed pattern or, um, or freehand. And so often what could happen, because you're on a, a thinner foam as well, is that if you put too much pressure on with all those needles, parchment can sort of really come up on itself and it can sort of crack. And so the idea is that you shallow perforate and then you take a single needle fine because all of the multi-needle tools are based on a fine needle. And then you would go back in and then individually re-perforate into a deep foam to get a, a crisper hole, so to speak. So what you're doing, the multi-needle is sort of giving you those guides to start off with. And then when you go with a single needle tool, you'll get a better perforation, okay? I hope that made sense. It did in my head, but I'm sure um, Josie and Glynis and Jane will comment. But that's my understanding of it, especially when you're working, as I say, with a multi needle tool. Um, the pressure applied in order for it to um to perforate all the way through can cause the parchment to crack and buckle see what the grids do which is based on they're all based on a bold needle tool is it forces the tool to be held upright okay I've got a little tickle in my throat. Bear with me for a moment. <coughs> Excuse me. Cold coffee. Who else is drinking cold coffee or cold tea? Because they've forgotten it was on the side. Yes, I'm sure I'm not the only one. So now you can see, let me just lift that away. There we go. 
what we'll do when we get to the end of here i'm going to stop and we'll have a look at the difference between the perforated and the unperforated okay iced coffee see that's really strange maggie because i like cold drinks but i don't like cold coffee I don't like coffee cake either. Love coffee, whether it be instant or um, shop bought, filtered, but coffee cake and coffee biscuits and chocolate, no. And iced coffee is the sort of same for me. Isn't that weird? There's lots of weird things in my head. There really is. <laughs> oh, I'm the world's fussiest eater. I really am. And I get told off, get told off for it many, many a time. And so, okay. So I don't like cheese. Okay. But I like Dairy Lee triangles. Some of you say, well, that's not cheese. Yeah, Dairy Lee triangles, I like. Even the spread, I don't mind that. But I prefer the triangles. And I love what's it? Yes, I know they're not cheese either, but... Weird, isn't it? Really weird. I'm just weird. When it comes to food, I'm just weird. I'm sure I'm not the only one out there. Strawberries, yeah, I love strawberries. But I don't like strawberry chocolates. Um, you know when you get those like quality streets and you have the strawberry chocolates in there? No, they don't get touched. But strawberries, I can eat strawberries. I like to create my own eat when this when it gets warm in the summer. I like to create my own eaten mess, and um, and I make a big bowl of it. And my eaten mess, okay, it starts off really, really well, okay. So I have strawberries. This is really weird. Strawberries, bananas, garlic melon, grapes. Okay, so this all goes into my eaten mess. And I could eat that exactly how it comes just like so but no i then have to crumble meringues into it and some double cream and then <laughs> so it started off really healthy didn't it um Start off healthy with all that lovely fruit, and then I just kill it with double cream, meringue, and then to finish it all off, <laughs> I then crumble a couple of flakes into it as well. And it is absolutely delicious. I could eat that right now, actually. Weird, isn't it? But I enjoy it. That's the main thing, isn't it? Just like crafting. I enjoy crafting. Banoffee pie. No, can't do banoffee pie. Can't do cheesecake. No. Fresh cream cakes. I like. 
chocolate eclairs. Oh, don't get me started. Cream slices. Don't like custard tarts. Um, the only... Why am I telling you all my weird food um, habits? I don't like custard unless it's in a trifle. <laughs> See? Very weird. Very strange. Is anyone perforating along with me? Or am I just perforating alone? Did I miss that dot? Yeah, I did miss that dot out there. And that one. Okay, so we've nearly finished perforating one half of our bookmark. I'm not even going to look up to see what everyone's saying. Because I know I'll get into trouble. Okay. I reckon we're there on that half. So let's carefully remove this from our plate. So now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to zoom in really, really close. Let me take my glasses off before I stand up. Because although I can sort of see the difference, Okay, so let me zoom in really, really close. That's probably close enough. I don't know if I just pull this back slightly. Okay. So we can go with our bookmark or our border or our wrap just as an embossed pattern. When we combine it then with the perforating, it's another look to our design. And when you think about it, the only thing I had to do was just think about how I extended the border. I didn't have to think about any um, pattern design of where to emboss and where not to emboss. I didn't have to worry about where to perforate and where not to perforate because the magic of the duet plates is that it gives that to me with ease. So even if you're new to Groovy and maybe you're new to grid work, you can still create some really elegant pieces with the plates. See, for me, a traditional Groovy plate with an image etched in it is a no-brainer because if it's got a design on it like the lovely floral panels that we launched last week then I don't even need to think about it I know that every single time I'm going to get the same result and it's the same when it comes to doing this lace or grid work whether I want to perforate whether I want to just emboss whether I want to pico cut or not to pico cut the choice is entirely up to me, but I know which, whatever level that I want to take it to, it's gonna look nice. And it's gonna look exactly the same. I can replicate this again and again and again. So maybe I want to make some um, lovely little Easter crackers, cut them out of parchment, and then use this border to decorate the barrel of the cracker or just the edge of the cracker. When you look at a plate, I'm gonna zoom out now. Hang on, stand up again. Zoom out, out, static. Whee! Sorry, going a bit too fast. Okay, there we go. When you look a little bit more, Oh, it? There it is. So when you look at the plate, don't just look at it as a frame or as a border. Look at it 
as a decorative element to what you're working on. You can use just the corners. You can, you don't even have to emboss the whole width of the border. You could just do the outer parts. Remember how we looked at, where's that piece that I practiced on? Look, it's like a castle turret. That's what that reminds me of. You can just use that element down the edge or across your card or to go around or the inside of a frame. Once you get comfortable with the plate, and that's why we've been doing different things with it. Initially, it was to create a frame with ease. Okay. And now what we're doing is we're looking at the plate in a different way. And we've extended the design to be in order to create a bookmark. As I said earlier, you're only restricted whoops, by the size of your parchment. So if you wanted to do a longer border that you wanted to maybe wrap around an envelope or wrap around a candle, then A4 parchment is the way to go because you've got that longer length to it. I'm working on clear parchment because it's easier for you to see at home. But have a look at our rainbow parchment to get that beautiful color palette all the way through. Or the designer parchment, because when you're working with those types of parchment or the solid colors, you'll get another look as well. So it's all about having the right tools and having the flexibility of doing different things with it. So thank you once again for another fantastic Groovy Tuesday, keeping me company. Welcome to the, the newbies. I uh, hope I haven't scared you off too much. And uh, Stuart's popped the link up to our YouTube page that you can go back and watch all of the previous episodes, which is the same with the shack. If you missed that 300 bus yesterday, it's coming around the corner again on Monday. But you can go back and watch all of them again. So just to recap what we've got coming up, on Thursday, we've got the um, shack with clarity on Crate and Craft at 3 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Then on Friday, we've got nine o'clock and one o'clock with Barb on Crate and Craft, and I'm on at Craft Extra 11. The lovely Tina, who hasn't texted me today, she normally texts me um, during the Groovy Tuesday, is on at one o'clock and five o'clock on Saturday. We're back in the, on the bus 301 on Monday, and then Groovy Tuesday again on Tuesday. Don't forget to check out Barbara's blog, barbaragrayblog.com and the Clarity Matters blog that Grace and the design team look after. Every Saturday and Sunday, claritymattersblog.com. Inspiration for those who, not everybody's on Facebook. Step-by-step um, -step projects, um, inspiration. It really is just, if you're just looking, maybe you're out and about, you're waiting for a bus or you're waiting for a hospital appointment, go through and just have a look and just see what's out there. So thank you once again. I might go and buy an Easter egg now, or maybe I'll go and make an Easter cracker. So thank you again, Stuart, for, for being in the room and the lovely design team, as always, for helping out. I will see you all next Tuesday. Take care now. Bye-bye.